Hey guys, M12, Wardog here, back with another strategy guide for you, and today, we are playing Italian Wars, we are doing Gunships of the Desert map. Now, I know we're skipping a few, I'm going back and forth, and doing these as I can prepare them. On this one, I'm trying to figure out how I can do this, I know I have a good strategy for it, just that it's a more of a thing back where we did, uh... Operation POW, and we had to get them out in a set amount of time. This is a bit more of a time crunch, so I'm going to have to figure out, practice, how I can do this and explain it to you all at the same time. That may require a lot of editing. Beachhead, not my best one, I will admit, but it's definitely one that I will cover once I work out a better strategy. At least one that gets me an A+. Plus. Or, not A+. Plus. I've been playing too much, uh... I've been playing, uh, too much of... Uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain. I'm thinking of, uh, the, the, the skill level and whatnot. A is what I'm trying to get. Um, B is okay, I guess. And today, we're gonna do this. Now, it may sound a bit ridiculous at some points as for some of the weird crap that we can do, but you definitely want to play along for this. Alright, so let's see here. Let's load in. Must cut the supply of Neurosite. All right, all that stuff. Now I'm going to pull a few uh, tricks out of my sleeve and show you. Uh, once we get to a certain point during this level, you could branch off and do one or two things. Um, it really doesn't matter which one. I mean, one's going to be faster than the other if you're trying to go for a score. But uh, one I think would be more beneficial technique-wise. All right. So, our main objective here, and yes, you do want to stay the enemy air drum then cross the river in the, uh, you definitely want to stay in the heavy recon. This is kind of, uh, kind of a bit shocking that, uh, my, uh, Missile vets can actually do that, though. Alright. Once you tell them to destroy that one, then you definitely want them to follow you. And then you want to get the F out, because, uh, enemies will be coming soon. So you want to bug out as soon as possible. This thing seems so slow, though. All right, we lost one, but as long as we have at least two, we should be fine. He shall always catch you in the end. All right. Well, I guess you are right. That's a game of kit. Hitting a mouse. All right. So, yes, we do get this, but I definitely want to wait for my, uh... Missile vets. Where are they? They're at the river crossing. All right, there. I'm going to wait for them. All right. All right. So, this is the first mission that you use one of these gunships, I believe. Alright. Okay, I need to get my missile vets over here. They stopped following me once I transferred out of that, uh, heavy recon. Or at least, for that matter, at least over the river. Alright. Now that we got this taken care of, that missile vet is very low on health. Holy crap. I'm gonna tell them to wait there, and we're gonna scout ahead. Now, sometimes it's good to scout ahead, but not all the times, because if you have AA, you probably won't be getting out of there fast enough to, to do anything. Okay, now rockets! Rockets, yes, or missile vets... Which is our, uh, which is the Western Frontier equivalent of rocket troops that they have. Yes, I've seen them damage gunships, but they can't get a lock on them, and it's very inaccurate. It's like trying to fire an old Civil War musket at a target 500 meters away. It's not, it's not designed for it, and it's not accurate enough to do that, especially at the kind of target that's firing at. What you definitely want to do, though. Is do make make this to your advantage, but if they get right under you, like right right underneath the gunship, 
They can't, um, they can't, uh, you can't get a lock on them, which is why I have to back up sometimes. All right. Now what we want to do is go for this heavy tank and take it out. Now there's also another rocket vet somewhere. Now heavy tanks are a little bit slower, which means that they're very easily taken out by gunships. Now this also will apply to battle stations, as they too pretty much are even slower, but they have more armor, so it's going to take a lot more hits to uh, destroy them. Now I'm going to tell these guys to follow me. Now the reason why I'm specifically choosing the missile vets is because one of them was low in health, and there is a thing here for it, so we need to take care of that. Once I take out this rocket vet, that is. Alright. Now, you usually want to be very careful. Alright, Commander. Time to join forces with your infantry division. Head for the Silver Star. Careful where you land, though. If you get too close to the ground. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this chopper behind. I know... It's kind of cool, you first, you, you get it for your first mission, but you have to leave it behind for this mission, because up ahead, there's going to be anti-air um, vehicles and uh, assault vets, or, there, or the Exylvanian equivalent, which are miniguns, which can damage them. They're not optimized and designed for destroying them like missile vets are, but nonetheless, you get the picture. All right, now we get these guys to follow us and tell these guys to attack. Meanwhile, we have to get up the hill just to fire at them from the heavy tank. The Exylvanians must have anti-air vehicles forward of our position. And if you ever get caught on that, remember high traction mode is B. So once you pretty much go up there, take those out, you can usually, frequently, what I do is check the map here. This is all just one giant circle. Now, objectively, this airfield, it still has units here, miniguns, people. And that's probably going to reinforce this, but sometimes they don't. It really depends if they get there in time. So, and all this stuff, and just be aware that these units might come over here and help these guys um, if you get too close to the old airfield. Right now, we're trying to stop the Nero site field and take that out, so that's our main objective here. And tell these guys to attack this. The anti-air, it can damage heavy tanks. I've done it in another mission where you actually primarily want to be an anti-air unit. But you can definitely... If you don't keep moving, the anti-air is pretty much on a losing battle here. Now, what you want to do, now that you've eliminated that, is tell everyone to, to stay right where they are. And then go ahead and hop in your chopper. Now, what you're going to do is play hit and run games. What you want to do is to always, if you can, outnumber at the point of attack... Or have a stronger, uh... Or have a stronger, uh... Presence where you are attacking. Outnumber or overpowering at the point of attack. Either one, so long as you have one or the other, you can definitely turn it to your advantage. If you can. So, for our next bit, what we are going to do... Once, um... Everyone is down there... is we are going to start taking out rocket troops and tanks. As you can reduce the number of these on the outside of the base, it will make it easier when we want to go in. Heavy tanks, worst nightmare, or light tanks, worst nightmare, are gunships. You always want to have your tanks in your battle stations always have something with air that can provide air cover escorting it. It's better than not having anything at all and just leaving it open. Now, one thing though, when you're doing this and backing up so that you can get a lock on them, is be aware 
of your spatial awareness of your surroundings and make sure you don't crash into uh uh any of the Nero site towers which are these things right here you actually can't destroy these although you will in another mission I believe which I will be doing a strategy guide of as well so heavy tank once you eliminate this the ones on the outside are good, but there's still a few near the entrance. You want to quickly attack the, both of them and drag them towards you. He caught up with the AA defenses inside. You can do that. You can also take out this MG bunker easily because um, it's in mobile. If you want. Alright. Heavy tanks are next. Eliminating them. If they're not moving, that's usually good. But now I gotta worry about the other one that is much closer. Okay, that one's down. Alright. Now what I'm gonna do is fly over here. Fly around and get this heavy tank. Now, the next step is to play a game of... is trying to get the upper hand. In a fair one-on-one -on -one duel with the gunship, it's usually who's ever flying the lowest to avoid getting hit and whatnot. But in this case, I'm going to turn this towards my advantage. Now, there's a little warning sound that happens when a gunship has a lock on you and is fired... well, when, when a projectile has a lock on you. So right now, what I'm doing is a 1v1 on the gunship. This is going to last forever because we can easily avoid these. Especially when we're firing at each other and we're going back and forth like this. But what they don't realize is that I'm dragging this gunship closer to the rest of my battalion, which has missile vets. So, which actually can lock on. Gunships can't lock on to other aircraft, which is also why you're having a hard time doing this. Gunships can lock on to... Um, Ground units, but that's about it. I'm trying to lure it back to us. And it's not close enough. Oh, now it's firing back. Alright. We've engaged in combat with it. Now it's coming towards us. This is good. Takes a minute or two sometimes. Sometimes you're lucky and it starts to run away. And you gotta remember where the bridge is while you're driving backwards. For this, but you also don't want to drive too far away that it just backs off. Then you want to tell your uh, crew once you get a lock on it again, if you lose lock, to fire at it. And then boom. It should go down. And you shouldn't lose that many units anyway. Or any at all because you have a lot of, uh... Missile vets. I think we lost an assault vet, but that's... Nothing to worry about. As long as we have at least one, we're fine. Alright. So now I can't directly go into the Neurosite field at this point. The reason being is that the helicopter is going to shoot up by all AA in that area. It's going to be a bloodbath for, for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go here. Now at this point you could strategically do, do the correct matchups, bring everyone in there, have vehicles take on the heavy vehicles, infantry take out infantry but prioritize the anti-vehicle infantry first, and have your vehicles prioritize the anti-infantry vehicles first before the heavy ones or vice versa depending upon the situation and so forth. That's very good, but you have a higher chance of losing casualties because you have a bigger presence and they know right where you are and they're going to attack you. Now would you believe me, and I know I bet some of you in the comments are going to say that this is a load of BS and that this is not going to work if you stop and put a comment here. If you, an if you answer my question now, can can I take out an entire neurosite field with one assault vet? Call me crazy, but yes, you can. Not good for time crunch, though, if you're on a time crunch. But then again, 
you can also damage gunships as well. Now, the reason why I couldn't go that close into the area to get the... To get these is, um, the, the gunships is because of the AA. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm pretty much going to bring my whole battalion with me just outside this area here. And I'm only going to go in with one. But I need to first get rid of... Uh, my gunship, which I accidentally called that over here, too, when I told the whole battalion to come over here. Because the gunship is going to get there first because it's the fastest. Alright. Now I need to grab one of these med kits. And that was my mistake that I forgot to do. Is to uh, tell the chopper to stay behind. Now you don't want to capture the points just yet. Because when you start doing that, infantry is going to come in more reinforcements. So would you rather face two small armies or one large army? Because of the reinforcements. So you want to take out all the things there and then call, and then go for it. Alright. Alright, you want to take out as many as you can, usually going back and forth like this. It's really cheap, but then again, this is one of the best strategies I know. See, that anti-air cannot fire straight, so an assault vet could take it out. Any ground unit is pretty much its worst enemy, unless you, uh... His worst enemy for an anti-air unit. Especially bazooka vets, more so than they are to tanks, because they can't get a lock and fire back at them. Although, if there's a group of bazooka vets, you're more likely to hit one than you are just a single one. But then again, let's be honest, at that point, if you have multiple bazooka vets firing at you, it's going to be hard to avoid all of them. And you're probably going to get destroyed before that happens anyway. So feel free to lure all your gunships, all enemy gunships, outside the outside the uh, Nero side field if you want. Now, another part to the strategy which comes into play is how fast are you capping these points. Simply put, the best way to cap a point the fastest is to have more people on it. Now, the way you do that is you lower the enemy flag and raise your own. Now, you can pretty easily do this by, um, by having more people there, but, um, if you have one, then it's gonna be super slow, and so forth, and it's not gonna be that fun. Now, I'm gonna try and take out all of these, because these guys are would eventually come in here anyway to reinforce the area. And I just gotta be careful of the area of effect. That that tank has because I doubt it will actually be able to get a lock on me and fire directly at me, provided I'm just avoiding. Oh crap, it actually got a good hit on me. Now, there is sometimes that does happen, but for those of you who don't know, that you can actually resupply here. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, things here. Which I'm gonna call it med kits, med packs, whatever you wanna call them. Now from here, I can fire at this bunker without getting hit. Now you pretty much don't need to fire at this because nothing's going to come in from that way unless you want to go back through there and deal with all that. All of the air support and air cover that that thing has at once. Now you gotta flank any units that come in here as well. Now, I'm leaving this part largely unedited because I think a lot of people watching this are gonna call BS on me when I say one assault vet is all I need to uh, win and take over this uh, base. And I'm just gonna know it because, well, I know the strategy for this. 
and whatnot, but, uh, there are other strategies that work, too, that work a lot faster, but this is the one that I think that I think is best shows, um, how you can outnumber and overpower at the point of attack at pretty much any engagement, almost any engagement. Gonna get rid of this anti-air. Actually, at this point, it doesn't really matter. We lost our chopper. But if you were to have it and you, and you did remember not to call it with you at the time that I did, then you should be fine. Alright. Now that you've had that taken care of, your next objective is to check and see if there's anything inside. Sometimes I do that just to see if there's like maybe one or two more units that I haven't gotten yet. But nope, all the red dots are capture points on this thing. So I don't think I've actually mainly shown how to do this, but you just lock onto it and press B when you're close enough. You're pretty much vulnerable and open to any attacks when you do this. But technically, I've taken out all the enemy units in the AO of Area of Operation, which is this Neurosite field. Now, of course, it's super slow and whatnot, but at this point... So, yep, at this point, they're calling in reinforcements. So, the second this is done, you gotta bug out and prepare for enemy reinforcements in the area. Like that. Crap, crap, crap. Because you got to do that fast, and it's probably not the best option to choose that one. Alright. Now, once the reinforcements come, you definitely want to find a place where you can get where wherever it is. You want to figure out where the enemies are, and then reattack it. So you pretty much have to leave, and then reassault the base. In this case. Or well, in my case, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to attack this gunship here. Because we're not technically inside the base. And get rid of that. Bravo, Commander. The newer site fields are now ours for the taking. Pretty much at this point. Now I'm going to retake it again. Now that I have this. Now there's no point in uh, bringing in more units unless you into an engagement that is not necessary. In this case, I found out a way to make sure that this was not necessary for them to have more than um one assault vet. Alright. Now, I can look around in third person view... And see, people are trying to crawl up my six while I'm trying to do this. Usually, if you want the best best way to do this and fight off enemies and be ready to give rapid fire orders in case people try to attack you while camp while while you're trying to cap this point, is probably be one of the guys that is not doing this. But if you want to make a challenge for yourself and uh, and do this, then that's fine. So the only time that a unit has come into this, a friendly unit or a unit from my battalion has ever entered this neuroscient field fortress is when I was there. So I could go ahead, if I wanted to, probably take out some of these other units here, but I don't think I need to. I mean, I could. You want to know what I'm going to? Just because you get more power that way. Another way to see if a point's fully capped is you can look at the flag. If it's not all the way up, you can always recap it. That comes into key play when you, uh, when you, uh, that's a key factor in one of the beach raids that, uh, you have to defend from. All right. So, what we're going to do here is cap the last point. So, at this point, it doesn't really matter. I could call in the units, but I'm just going to tell them to leave there. I accidentally pressed the button. But nonetheless, 
This strategy allows you to more or less pick your engagements, but make sure you always have the upper hand in this in this case. Um I think in a lot of missions here most of the missions here, you have to do that, but in some, you don't, and that's what makes it difficult, is that you have to do it a little bit differently. I mean, yeah, I guess you could, but not, not the same as, um, but not in the same way as I did on this mission or other ones that I've shown before here. Clearly, we're not inferior if we won. By capturing and holding this base, we have cut one of the enemy's primary lines of supply. Now, of course, I'm going to reiterate that I had zero speed for that because I went in with just one assault vet. Probably would have gotten a lower technique because I would have had more casualties. But in the end, we got as many guys out of there as possible. We only lost an assault vet and a gunship. Um, one, one of those was my mistake by accident. I forgot that the gunship is much faster than the rest of the battalion. But other than that, we did pretty good. I will be doing other uh, missions. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna tell me which ones from this game you wanna see first for strategy guides, I will do fan suggested ones before I do one of the other ones, except for one or two because I've already started playing on making strategies for them. I guess it really depends. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed watching this strategy guide on how to complete gunships of the desert mission and battalion wars. If you enjoyed this, take the time to leave any comments, questions, feedback for me. Comment section down below would be highly appreciated. And I will see you guys later in another video. Bye-bye.